Okay, back again. So now I'm going to talk about uh, the review of solving inequalities, one-step inequalities. So review of solving. I don't know why I put that dot there. Let's let's get rid of that. Thank you. One-step inequalities. Now I was going to do this separately, but I think I'm going to put it all together. Uh, we're going to include that when we have inequalities, we actually, because there's always an inequality means not equal, that means there's an infinite number of answers that are correct. We need to graph it so we can visually see it. Now, I'm going to be kind of mean in my examples uh, because we're going to still be practicing with fractions and decimals, okay? And But we're also going to go over the graphing as well. So just a couple of brief comments on how to do this process. We're going to isolate the variable on the left. And when I'm saying on the left, I'm saying in reference to the inequality sign. And the constant is alone on the right. Now we want that orientation because if we have the variable written first in our answer, the inequality symbol, and then the constant, then our inequality is going to point to the direction we color, because that makes logical sense. Okay, so let's kind of add that in there. So the answer needs to have this format. Actually, let me talk about something else. Sorry about that. We're going to use inverse operations. Operation, oh my heck, operations to isolate the variable. And so what that means is if I have addition in my problem, I'm going to use subtraction. If I have subtraction in my problem, I'm going to use addition. If I have multiplication in my problem, I'm going to use division, and if I have division in my problem, I'm going to use multiplication. Now we always have some examples to the, or uh, we have some exceptions, but uh, not with the adding and subtracting. It can show up with the multiplying and dividing. Okay, and then our answer. should look like this. Some sort of variable, one of the four inequality symbols, greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, and then we have a number. And the number, because he just sits by himself, he is called a constant. And we talked about that in chapter six. Okay. All right, so let's talk about those inequality symbols, and then we'll do our examples. So inequality symbols. Anytime I see an inequality symbol, I am going to interpret what that means in my graph. Uh, so if I have a greater than symbol, that means it's an open circle at the number of the solution. That means, and we'll talk about that in just a second. So open circle, and we color right, because it's pointing in the right direction. It looks like the end of the right arrow cap, right? If I have less than symbol, then it's still an open circle, and I'm going to color left, because it's pointing to the left. Okay, that word circle looks like surty. Let's, oops, sorry, he's okay. You can come back. It's this guy that needs some assistance because I got everything too close. Okay. Then we've got greater than or equal to, so that's a 
closed circle. And then I color to the right because of the way it's pointing. And then if we have less than or equal to, we're going to have a closed circle. And we're going to color left. Okay, so <clears throat> in a nutshell, open circle means number is not a solution. So it it's kind of telling you where your solutions begin, but it doesn't include that number. That's why it's open. And then opposite would be the closed circle. And that means the number is a solution. Okay, so let's get into some examples and the directions are gonna say solve, then graph. Now, you don't always have to be told to graph because that's how we demonstrate an answer with the exception of word problems. Word problems we never graph, okay? But we'll deal, I'll deal with that in a separate video. Okay, so let's do four different ones, one with each operation. So I have x minus 3.5 is less than 0 0.147, or 1 147 thousandths. So I'm going to practice my skills we had just talked about. I'm going to add 3.5 to both sides, lining up the decimal points, and notice that my top, my bottom number, has two blank spots, so I'm going to add two zeros to get those guys all lined up. All right, so this, those are opposites. Opposites always add to equal zero, so I get x is less than, and then here I'm adding, so I get a seven, I get a four, one plus five is six, put in a placeholder, zero plus three is three. Now, anytime I'm graphing, <clears throat> I'm going to need to write three or maybe four, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> numbers on my number line. When I have a number that is a mixed number, either with decimals or fractions, I'm going to put four tick marks on my number line. I think to myself, what two whole numbers does 3.6 fall between? Well, it's bigger than three, but it's less than four. So those are going to be the two numbers that go in the middle. Then I pick a number that's in front of the three and a number that's after the the four. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mark a number or a point on my number line where I think that 3.647 is. And then I'm going to label it as 3.647. So there's no guesswork as to what that number is. Now I have less than, so I'm going to put it over here. So that means open and left. So I have an open circle at that 3.647 and I color left. So notice that my arrow cap is the same as the less than symbol. Now be very, very generous with your graphing so nobody has to guess what you're doing. Um, and again, what this says is 3.67 is not an actual solution to this problem, but it's where from that point on the solutions begin. All right, second problem, we have y plus three-eighths is greater than or equal to nine-sixteenths. All right, so the inverse of adding would be subtracting, so I'm going to subtract three-eighths from both sides. This one's going to require a little bit more work. Those zero out, and we get y is greater than but the problem is I don't have common denominators. So common denominator between 16 and 8 is 16. I have, that didn't change on the top, so the 9 doesn't change. But I am going to need to multiply 8 times 2 to become 16. So 3 times 2 is 6. So this is what my problem looks like. 9 sixteenths take away 6 sixteenths. And the answer I get is 9 take away 6 is 3 and 16 stays the denominator. <clears throat> now, what two whole numbers does this guy fall between? Well, he's a fraction, which means he's between 0 and 1. So in my number line, again, I'm going to have 1, 2, 3, 4 numbers. 
that 0 and 1 are the 2 in the middle. Before 0 becomes a negative 1, after the 1 becomes a 2. I'm going to make a mark <coughs> where I think 3 16 would be. And so it's way less than half, so I'm going to make it closer to 0. But I am going to label it so everybody knows what number I'm talking about. This time, I've got, remember, the less than or equal to. So that says closed, meaning 3 16 is an actual answer. And then I'm going to color, oops, sorry, I put it color to the left. Nope. I'm going to color to the right. I wrote down the wrong inequality. Let's fix that. Okay, let's just start all over again with pen. Sorry. And color to the right. <coughs> so, closed at 3 16 and I color to the right for greater than. Okay, number three, let's do a um, multiplication problem. And this is the hardest of the multiplication problems. What's weird is I'm multiplying two-thirds by P. So you would think that what I would do would be to divide both sides by two-thirds, right? That's the way to do this. Now that's the way I would solve this. I would divide both sides by two-thirds. But then it gives me this weird looking fraction in a fraction, so I'd have to rewrite it um, and then vert or horizontally from vertically, and then I'd have to change it from a division problem to a multiplication problem, yada, yada, yada. And it, honestly, it's the fastest way to... So instead of doing all of that, I'd multiply both sides by the reciprocal. Okay. So I'll show you what that looks like, and then I'll show you a second way to solve this problem. So even though it seems like we should be using division, oops, sorry, I'm actually going to be using multiplication, okay? And so 3 over 3 equals 1, 2 over 2 equals 1, so I get 1, and 1 times p is p. Now I'm going to solve this problem a second way as well, okay? Now let's see. I'm going to try to see if I can cross-cancel. Uh, 3 goes into itself once and into 18 6 times, so then I multiply straight across and I get 15 twelfths. But remember with fractions, I do need to try to reduce, and I notice these guys have a 3 in common. And so that's going to give me an actual final answer of p is less than or equal to 5 fourths, or 1 and 1 fourth, which is helpful because that's going to tell me what numbers are going to go in my number line. So that's 1 and 1 fourth is between 1 and 2. So on my number line, one, two, three, four. 1 and 2 are in the middle. In front of 1 comes a 0. After 2 comes a 3. OK, I'm going to make a mark where I think 1 and 1 fourth would be. And I can label it as 1 and 1 fourth. I could label it as 5 fourths. Now, my inequality is less than or equal to, so it's going to be closed. That says that 5 fourths, or 1 and 1 fourth, is an answer. And I'm going to color to the left. So there we go. Now, uh, let's see. I am going to show you that problem. Let me get the division one in, the last one, then I'll come back to this one. I, I want to make sure I can get that last one in. So I'm going to cram it over here because it's a real simple one. So this one we have t divided by 4. Remember we use that fraction bar to mean division because it's that number in the numerator divided by the number in the denominator. So t divided by 4 and the inverse of division is going to be multiplication. So I'm going to multiply up high by 4, because I want it to be 4 over 4, which equals 1. And then t times 1 is t, is greater than 36. So the greater than is going to tell me that it's um, going to be open, that 36 is not a solution, and then I'm going to color to the right. Now here's what's great about this guy. Only three numbers on this number line, because it's a whole number. So the number that's going to go in the middle is the 36. In front of it becomes 35, and after it is 37. So at 36, I'm going to have an open circle. Do not make it so small that I, oops, sorry, wrong direction, that I can't read. OK? 
okay? That seems to be the big problem, is that people are making that circle, and I can't tell if it's open or closed, so make sure that I can tell, okay? And that's how you solve that problem. So let me do the second version of the number three. So I'm going to kind of make a big mess here. So for a lot of people, this became the easier way of solving this problem. First thing you want to do is get rid of the division. Okay, and the reason why we want to get rid of division first, because then it gets rid of fractions. So I'm dividing by 3, so I'm going to multiply by 3. So that goes away, being 1, and then 1 times 2p is 2p. And then 15 times 3 is going to give me... Um, is going to give me 40. Oh, I forgot this is a fraction of D's. I'm like, what is going on with this problem? Let me try this again. Okay, there we go. So this is the part that I saw a lot of people forget about with equations. 3 can go into 18 six times. Remember, this is just like 3 over 1, right? All right, so what are we left with? So on this side, we have 2P on the left. On the right side, we have 15 over 6. Now you might say, hey, you didn't simplify. Well, guess what? I'm not done. So here comes the part that people sometimes get a little confused about. How If I did that dividing by 2, I'm going to end up with a problem that looks like how I solved it in the beginning. So here's the other thing we talked about. We're going to multiply again, like we did over here, by the reciprocal. So we're going to multiply both sides by 1 half. Okay? So then that leaves me with P is less than or equal to 2. Oops, sorry. Can't cancel with anything. What am I talking about? can't cancel with 6 because they're on the same level. So then I just multiply straight across. So 15 times 1 is 15. Sorry, I'm writing really small today. And then 6 times 2 is 12. Now, the, again, issue we have is we do need to reduce. They both have a stinky 3 in common, so I divide that out. And then I have P is less than or equal to 5 fourths. Okay? So that's another way of solving that problem. All right, good luck with this, guys. See you later. Bye.